Uh, good evening. Um, as uh, the chair of the Department of Urban Planning and Design, it's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Lampagnani. Uh, before I do so, I just want to acknowledge Scott Simpson of the Kling Stubbins Partnership, who are co hosts of this lecture this evening. So thank you very much. Uh, well, Professor Vittorio Lampagnani uh, is the past immediate uh, chair of the department uh, and the current chair and professor of the history of urban design at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, uh, ETH, as we sort of tend to know but here, uh, in Zurich. As we at the GSD uh, look ahead to celebrating next year the 50th anniversary of the founding of the urban design program here, often considered the first or among the first such formal programs of its kind, and as uh, the GSD faculty continues to explore how best to prepare uh, the wisest, of course, the most effective, uh, the most talented, the most uh, uh, creative urban designers and planners, uh, we very much look forward, Professor Lampugnani, to your remarks tonight uh, entitled, A New Discipline of Urban Design. Uh, as I mentioned to you, a, a very appropriate title for the discussions taking place uh, within this building at the moment. Uh, in fact, over the past 50 years, there have been many efforts to define uh, the field of urban design. And even substantial argument about whether it is a discipline or not, or a frame of mind or a set of values or a set of aspirations and techniques shared by a number of disciplines committed to cities and to improving uh, ways of urban life. Some consider the lack of a precise definition actually a strength, uh, enabling urban designers to range across rather broad territories uh, related to city building. Others, however, lament the kind of vagueness that's, uh, uh, that's associated sometimes, that constitutes urban design, or its definitions at least, and wonder how any professional or academic enterprise uh, performs its fundamental purposes and responsibilities uh, uh, without being able to explicitly describe its essential purpose. Others still remain downright skeptical about the very possibilities of designing cities or substantial portions of those. Of the latter, I would say, they haven't spent much time in East Asia or India of late. Uh, Jose Luis Sert, who we consider the progenitor of the discipline and who in fact founded our urban design program here half a century ago, uh, 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 hosted uh, nearly a dozen important international conferences on urban design between 1956 and 1970, uh, and as determined as he was to kind of raise the profile of the discipline, he was often frustrated by what he called, quote, the fog of amiable generalities, the fog of amiable generalities that would accompany discussions at these conferences. And way back near the beginning of the discovery of urban design, uh, at least here, uh, in the first issue of Synthesis, a publication I'm sure you've never heard of, uh, but was uh, the platform of its day, we've now published two platforms, uh, Vittorio, I might say, a journal published then by GSD students. Uh, in the very first issue, uh, there was a remarkable survey of 32 distinguished architects, landscape architects, planners, economists, social scientists, lawyers, and so forth, uh, that were asked to define this sort of newly emerging notion of urban design. I'm going to quote from some of these definitions uh, as a sort of a, uh, a, 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 a venue for you to then uh, begin. Uh, eight, by the way, of these 32 people said they didn't know. They responded they did not know. Paul Rudolph answered that he was too busy to answer the question. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright answered that he was not interested in the question. Uh, but Le Corbusier, answered in a very expansive fashion. To quote, it, it being urban design, it was the most vital expression of society. The most vital expression of society. And Walter Gropius uh, wrote even more expansively in Synthesis, that to quote him, in order to supersede today's social destroying robotization 
and this is written in 1957, in order to supersede today's soul-destroying robotization, the modern urban designer's most exciting task is to satisfy all, and I repeat all, emotional and practical human needs by coordinating the dictates of nature, technique, and economy into beautiful habitat. You can say, wow, there's a definition of urban design. And Siegfried Gideon, uh, here at the time, and who had been teaching for many years a course called The History of Urban Design, even though there was no program in urban design, uh, he simply wrote, and I'll end with this, uh, quote, urban design has to give visual form to the relationships between you and me. Rather beautiful, actually. Urban design has to give visual form to the relationship between you and me. Uh, so, Vittorio, uh, we really could use your help this evening as we begin to prepare for our second half century trying to define urban design. And there are very few people who could, do, who could help us more than Professor Lampugnani. His teaching has ranged from Switzerland, uh, currently, to Spain, to Germany, to Italy, his home uh, environment, and indeed to here at the GSD, where he spent a fair amount of time some time ago. He's been involved in many important urban projects through his Studio di Architectura, based in Milan. His list of publications is indeed too numerous to recite. I actually asked the librarian to uh, catalog them for me, and I got three pages of the most small type uh, uh, to show me what you had produced. Uh, he has, of course, been involved in uh, uh, numerous juries, uh, exhibitions, conferences on urbanism around the planet, and indeed, back here with us, along with uh, Professor Busquets, has been involved in a couple of the Green Prize committees where we select uh, on a biannual basis or every two-year basis uh, the most sort of noteworthy urban design project. So without further ado, Please welcome Professor Lampugnani. Thank you very much for this uh, invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Um, thank you very much, Alex, for uh, this um, very kind, um, although I must say also uh, a little intimidating uh, introduction uh, that uh, uh, you were kind enough to <clears throat> give to me. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, you know, you made it quite clear that uh, that the title of um, of my lecture, which I uh, sketched down uh, uh, in a in a weak uh, moment, um, uh, is um <clears throat> is rather presumptuous, um, and. Uh, but I, I, I think I could, uh, I could uh, propose it uh, to you all, um, because of course nobody would ever uh, think that I would f you know, fulfil uh, the, the promise that the title uh, implies. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, uh, what I thought I, I would do, what I'm going to do, if, uh, if you let me, is um, uh, I've divided the whole thing into parts. So um, the first part uh, will be will be a kind of sketch of uh, my theoretical uh, position that is very subjective, uh, as always, I think, uh, the theoretical positions. Um, and uh, the second part um, will uh, be about a project, um, in fact, a campus uh, of a pharmaceutical company that we, are, uh, that we have designed and we are in a way realizing in uh, in Basel so that you can you know you can check um, if uh, the theoretical promises are fulfilled uh, in uh, in practice or or not which is a good way to verify theories but also to verify uh, practical um, practical projects let me start uh, um, with um, with a little bit of theory, only a little bit, um, uh, illustrated by a few images. This is an image that probably you all know very well. Um, it's, uh, in fact, it's a cartoon uh, that was printed 1909 in the architectural uh, record. It would not be known if uh, it would have been taken as uh, 
in a way as a symbol of the problems of at that time contemporary urban design by Hegemann and Peetz in their American Vitruvius um, and uh, and in this wonderful book about civic art that you all uh, all know uh, they um, <coughs> they showed it um, with uh, its original caption chaos um, and explained uh, that this is exactly what uh, should be avoided, what urban design needs uh, to avoid, uh, where there a new a new beginning must take place in the practice of architecture and design uh, in order to create um, to create uh, harmonious complexes of architecture and not just random uh, random situation like uh, uh, like uh, this picture. You know, one may may argue now. Um, if it's is it really a bad example or um, has it some interested interesting features um but uh, but what is uh, i think do we have uh, sound problems yes we do I'll give you back the, this one no and also this I'm sorry because the other one was much more uh, fashionable, but uh, <laughs> but maybe this is more practical. So uh, uh, can, can can you hear me? You should really interrupt if uh, if something goes uh, goes wrong. Thanks, um, and thank you for the technical uh, help. Um, so so this is in a way this the the the, the image uh, that uh, synthesizes uh, the problem at the beginning of the century. Uh, in the 20s again, and maybe also today, in the beginning of the new uh, <coughs> new century, um, of an architecture that is made by single objects that are not co coordinated or not sufficiently coordinated by some common understanding and uh, some rules um, that are shared uh, by all um, all involved. Um, the result of uh, of this, but also of other uh, other forces, um, is uh, what we all know. It's the periphery, the sub suburbia, uh, the sprawl. Um, I'm taking a European example. It's uh, sprawl is not an American, uh, uh, an exclusively American uh, feature. This is uh, is is, uh, is, uh, um, is just an aerial photograph of uh, the northern part of Zurich. Um, and uh, so you can see that even this uh, beautiful city has a lot of, of very complex uh, uh, situation, low density, big infrastructure. You can see the airport on, uh, uh, on top uh, and, uh, and uh, quite unclear borders of, uh, between, between, uh, between the constructed city and uh, the little lands landscape. That um, <clears throat> that has been um, that has been uh, left, um, and of course uh, the the machinery that produces this um, is um, is uh, this one uh, again a cartoon um, <clears throat> a cartoon of the forties, um, uh, which is interesting I think because uh, um, because it has been used by Victor Grun. Um, in a way to explain uh, the problem of this very sprawl, of this very suburbs um, that he, at least in the beginning, uh, supported and to which he, ga he gave then his uh, very famous uh, shopping uh, centers and, uh, um, <clears throat> and shopping malls. Um, I like it because it shows, um, it shows a number of things. It shows how, how this, uh, this uh, houses, very monotonous houses, are produced uh, by, uh, yes, by a strange machine that produces houses but eats and eats at the same time eating, uh, eating the trees. Um, and the caption uh, says, uh, the masked builder strikes again. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and in a way, it is, it is a very early 
criticism of uh, of the suburban uh, phenomenon um, <clears throat> done by um, by an architect and urban planner um, that was at the time uh, absolutely not uh, not a, 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 an enemy of uh, of, the, of the suburban uh, suburban situation. Mm. Most of most urban theories uh, at that time, but also in our days, um, have taken as a starting point that suburbia, that the sprawl, that this incredible uh, expansion of the cities is something that cannot be avoided. It's something that we can, that we need to 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 come to terms with, and um, and something that um, <clears throat> that has to be studied, understood, maybe given a different form, a better form, but uh, somehow accepted. Um, I would like to challenge this uh, acceptance. Uh, of course, I speak from a European uh, point of view, but looking also at the United States, I would like to challenge uh, this, uh, this, um, this idea. Of course, uh, mm, the tale goes, uh, suburbia is somehow necessary, it's the, it's the consequence of the economical forces, of the pressure on the, on the, uh, on the land, uh, of, uh, of the enormous expansion of, uh, and necessary expansion of our cities. Um, but, mm, but we pretend that this enormous expansion is, uh, is a new phenomenon, um, but in fact it is not. It is not just a phenomenon of the 20th century, it's a phenomenon also of the 19th uh, century. And uh, if you look, I just selected one of the many plans of uh, city expansions of the 19th uh, century. I could of course have also t mm, could have taken also Barcelona and his uh, uh, Plan Serda. Um, uh, this is one of the worst plans uh, that came uh, uh, into, <laughs> into, into my hands. Uh, <clears throat> uh, its expansion uh, plan for um, <clears throat> for Berlin. Uh, it's quite uh, famous. In fact, it's notorious um, by James uh, Hobrecht. Um, <clears throat> and I, I don't want to to, to get uh, into into the the, uh, the criticism of this plan. It, I, I just want to show that uh, you can see the plan in in, in grey. So, so the the dark part is is the existing uh, city. Let me see if I can. This work, yes. So the dark park is the existing city, and this is the expansion. So it's quite, it's 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 very large, uh, and uh, um, and it needed to be very large. The expansion of Berlin was calculated at that time uh, quite realistically, uh, from about uh, seven hundred thousand uh, inhabitants here um, to three and a half millions uh, here. So it's quite a big chance. Uh, and I show all this plan only. Um, well, partially because it's not such a good plan, and, and but secondly, because it shows that it's a plan that takes up the enlargement of the city, um, but as a compact city. It's just, it's, it's not the continuation of the historical city. It has changes, it, uh, it has a different pattern, it has also a different uh, scale, but uh, it shows that it is possible to take, to, to accommodate uh, uh, a substantial number of uh, of people, and to to take also substantial pressure on uh, on the city um, by w without devouring enormous uh, amounts of landscape like we're doing um, <clears throat> like, like we're doing now. Mm, considering coming back to the first slide, the chaos slide that I showed. Um, I would like to uh, to point out that um, the idea of architectural objects uh, that we are pursuing at least since I would say uh, the end of the nineteenth uh, century um, <clears throat> is uh, is of course an idea that has a lot to do also with social developments, the subjectivity of the individuality and the, 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 the care for the individuality. Um, but that this care of the individuality has to be um, contained uh, by common understandings and common rules. Um, what I'm showing you here is uh, 
are the, the, the reflections or synthesis of reflections of uh, a gentleman, a colleague, uh, an architect named uh, Tristan Edwards, uh, who published in 1922 a book with a wonderful title, Good Manners in Architecture. And he, um, he basically analyzes um, where, uh, where a kind of ideal balance should be found between individuality of architectures and continuity of, uh, of the city. So basically, uh, he says, uh, the top figure uh, that you can see uh, on, on the very top, uh, this is too monotonous, that's uh, a little bit uh, too much. Uh, but what but the last picture that you see uh, on the bottom, um, that's in a way disrupting the continuity of the city. Uh, and, and we have to find a balance in between. And uh, um, his, uh, his arguments are quite, uh, uh, quite complex. And again, we don't need to go too much into, uh, into that. Um, the point is um, the title, Good Manners uh, in Architecture. And Edwards explains that a good-mannered architecture is like a good-mannered person. So a good-mannered person, uh, when he enters a room or he or she uh, talks to other, the other people, um, uh, does not uh, impose uh, himself or, uh, or herself, is polite, uh, and uh, in a way takes, uh, takes responsibility also for, for, for the whole room and for the situation in the room. And he says a building should do the same thing. It should, a building should talk to its neighbors, uh, should, uh, should, uh, um, should adapt at least partially to its neighbor and should consider himself uh, not, uh, not an individual, but part of a continuity. And, um, and I think that this, uh, um, this, uh, uh, this attitude um, is, uh, <clears throat> is something that is absolutely crucial for the development of architecture, for the development, obviously, of urban design, and, and for the development of our cities. Um, and for that, uh, for the development of uh, architecture, urban design, and our cities, we have, we have some instruments. Um, I think that dealing with urban design means to deal with uh, um, a scientific discipline, uh, a scientific discipline that has not, no truth, has no axioms. Uh, there is not the correct city and there is not uh, uh, the right uh, urban uh, setting. But there are elements that can be studied through history, can be analyzed and can be you know, reused uh, in, in uh, specific uh, compositions. Uh, I'm showing you a, just one page of a uh, of a manual of, uh, of urban design uh, drawn by uh, or put together and written uh, by Josef Stuben by the end of the 19th century. It's a very German uh, 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 enterprise. Um, it's part of an enormous uh, piece of work, the so-called uh, Handbuch uh, der Architektur. And um, so he, 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 he only treated urban design, it's, uh, it's a fairly thick book. And, uh, and this book shows, uh, mm, among other things, plans and sections of the most, most famous streets uh, uh, in the world. Um, and it shows them in order, not in order to, to, to suggest their imitation, because that's uh, not something that we all want, uh, want to promote. Uh, it shows them in order to systematize them, to show that streets are, are part of a system, uh, that they can, be, they can be put into an order, uh, they can be measured, of course. They are pieces of architecture with the sections, with its uh, trees, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, houses that, that uh, um, give, them, uh, give them a certain, uh, a certain proportion, um, and that these are instruments with which we can, which can work. Um, of course, Stuben is not the only, uh, the only uh, manual that appeared uh, in the late 19th uh, uh, century. Uh, a more beautiful uh, one uh, is uh, uh, from a more beautiful one I've taken this page. Uh, it's from the Promenade de, de Paris, uh, 
where Alphonse uh, Alphand, so the, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, landscape architect uh, working for Haussmann and uh, Napoleon III, um, did yet another thing. Uh, he showed his own solutions for Paris, uh, but in such a way that they do not describe Paris, but they describe the way to, to, uh, uh, to work um, and to intervene uh, in, uh, in a city through landscaping, uh, especially, so to the planting of trees. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it, it includes the sewage, uh, it includes, uh, uh, it includes uh, at least a big part of what we now call um, urban, um, <coughs> urban design. Mm. It's, uh, I think it's typical of our situation, or it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it shows the the critical situation of urban design um, that after, what can I say, after, after the American Vitruvius, so after the 20s, um, the production of these manuals uh, has uh, dramatically dropped. Basically, almost no, no not, not one manual uh, has, um, has appeared, with a very few, uh, few exceptions, which means that we have lost the, the, um, the confidence uh, of being able to analyze the situation of our cities, to systematize it, and to make it productive for the development and the design of new, um, of new uh, cities. And, and personally, I think that this is uh, to, to try uh, a fragmentary answer to your challenge. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think that this is one, uh, one of the tasks uh, that uh, new, old, I don't know, uh, renovated urban design uh, should, uh, should uh, tackle um, to, to work in a systematical way and to make the analysis um, to, 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 to be, let's say, to put, to transform the analysis into an instrument uh, of how to work uh, um, in the cities for a very simple reason. Um, because, uh, well, one of the reasons is that I have a chair of uh, the history of urban design, so of course I'm interested in, in, in explaining the usefulness of this chair. Um, but, uh, um, but the more serious uh, um, reason is that history is, uh, or, or our cities, which are pieces of history, uh, history is a kind of, 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 uh, of reservoir of, uh, of solutions to specific problems. And to these solutions, we can, uh, out of the solution, we can extract uh, um, many important informations um, that allow us not to avoid mistakes, we will always do mistakes, but at least to reduce this, uh, the, the, the possibility of doing mistakes um, <clears throat> under which uh, not simply the architect of the urban designer uh, will, will suffer, um, but uh, uh, quite a lot of people. Um, let me now jump to a project, actually a project where we have tried to, at least to, to put into practice some of, uh, of uh, our ideas, so our ideas about uh, density, about uh, history as a, as a as a teaching, uh, as, a, as, as an instrument for for uh, <clears throat> for design, and something where we can that we can use uh, in a productive and not imitative uh, way. Um, it's uh, the campus of a pharmaceutical uh, industry in uh, in Basel. Um, this is the situation. Mm. Um, it's uh, that we found. Uh, you can see. It is, oh no, sorry, it is, um, <clears throat> it is about this land here, it's uh, about 20 uh, uh, hectares of, um, of land. And, uh, and this image shows, it's in, it's in the north of, um, of the city, and it shows pretty well the situation of a site that used to be exclusively a production uh, site. And, uh, was becoming, this is a photograph about 10 years ago, um, was already becoming a center of uh, administration and especially of, uh, of research. And um, we were asked uh, to, to give uh, 
to give uh, a visual form, uh, uh, not for you and me, uh, as uh, uh, Gideon would have, uh, would have said, but to give a visual form to this transformation. So it had a lot to do with uh, Gideon's plea. Um, it was about a human relationship, uh, how people would, would work in a different way, and hopefully in a different, uh, in a different um, environment. So the, the, the brief uh, was to, mm, to give an architectural or, or an urban form to this transformation, to make this transformation easier, to speed it up, um, and of course also to create a nice place where people would uh, would work. So to create also a certain attraction. Um, again, this was not uh, just uh, for the sake of uh, architecture or beauty, um, but it was uh, for the sake of attracting the best uh, uh, researchers um, to a city that is not, you know, Boston or New York. Uh, so uh, um, <clears throat> where you would have to to create a little bit more uh, attractivity. Um, we looked, um, being historians, uh, we looked at the, at the old plan of uh, the plant, that's how it looked, uh, so very orderly, uh, not as we uh, found it. And uh, we also looked at, uh, at the situation of the time, that this is a photograph uh, taken in the 20s uh, of, uh, of the plant, at that time it was really a production uh, site. Um, all this is very attractive, I think, or could have been very attractive, uh, but all this had gone. Uh, so nothing uh, of this uh, uh, was um, left, because starting with the 50s and 60s, um, all these buildings had been torn down to create new uh, and larger um, and larger building. What we were asked to was to create a new, innovative uh, work environment, somehow a new um, <clears throat> a new city, and uh, and uh, mm, so this would have been an option, of course, um, as a, as a really modern, you know, modern uh, urban uh, environment. But uh, we suspected that uh, even if we tend to believe that this is the future, that not many of us would really like to live in such uh, in such uh, an environment. And uh, so we preferred to uh, take. For instance, this as, a, as an example, this is the plan of uh, uh, Selinund. Um, so it's, it's an antique uh, city with a very simple, uh, very, we think, very well working uh, grid. Or to take uh, a more complex plan like, uh, <clears throat> like this. Um, this is uh, the Nolli plan uh, of uh, Rome, of course, it's the center of Rome. And, um, <clears throat> why we, we, we like this plan, uh, or why I like this plan, uh, is, uh, well, first of all, for patriotic reasons, because this is my city, uh, which is a good, I think it's a good reason. Um, no, but also because um, I suspect that uh, this is really a very modern uh, situation. Um, it's a modern situation because not only shows all the public spaces in white, so it's very clear, uh, easy to read, um, because it shows an incredibly, um, incredibly fine net of, uh, of streets and courtyards and, and public uh, spaces, the churches, the courts of the, the courtyards of the palaces, um, that are, are tightly interconnected with each other. Um, and this means not simply that you can reach every point fairly quickly and uh, through a very attractive uh, space, uh, but it means also that you, you, have, uh, you have many chances of seeing and meeting people. It's, uh, it's somehow a communication uh, machinery, um, and it's exactly what, uh, what every enlightened company is looking for uh, nowadays. Um, uh, and, and Novartis was, um, a, a means or, or a, a, a display that, uh, that allows people to come together, that invites them to come together and invites them to communicate because knowledge management is one of the main, uh, main issues of the, these companies. They have a lot of knowledge, but they don't manage it correctly. They, there is no, uh, no real exchange. Besides, research uh, now is not done anymore 
in a in a in a still room by one single person, but it's a teamwork, like everything, almost everything, and um, so so communication was one uh, one of the main um, main uh, question. So we took uh, somehow this this. Uh, at least this idea of a historical city um, that has been created basically to put people together and that, uh, to allow them to live uh, in the best and, and more, most creative way. Uh, we took that as, as a departing uh, point for a much more simpler plan, of course, that, uh, than uh, the Rome uh, plan. This is the first sketch and it shows what we um, <clears throat> basically propose. We propose uh, the highest possible density uh, I will explain what highest possible density is uh, in a minute, um, uh, in a very clear uh, design uh, with a very simple uh, grid. We propose to keep the old uh, central street, uh, it's called Fabrikstraße, uh, Plant Street, um, as it uh, basically as it was, uh, to create an entrance here, where the streets arrive to, in, to a very important street, and as a compensation for this density to create two big parks, uh, one here at the entrance and one here towards, uh, towards uh, the Rhine. Of course, the main idea, or one of the main ideas, was to open up the whole situation towards, uh, towards the river, because that's a very attractive, uh, attractive situation. Um, here you can see the plan. Uh, in the context of Basel, you can see it's really part of the city now. Uh, uh, you can also see a curiosity. Uh, it's, uh, it borders to France. This is the border to, um, uh, to France. So it's in a very strategic point uh, also from the, let's say, from the political um, point, uh, <coughs> point of view. Um, and uh, to, to implement this plan, we um, we decided to start not from the buildings, um, also because it was not very clear what would really happen in these buildings, besides it was obviously research, but not who would really work there, uh, but to start from the public spaces. Um, so in a way to, to, to go the other way around as, uh, as usual, not, not uh, to, to leave the buildings out of a system of public uh, spaces. And, to look at the system of public spaces, again, we looked at the uh, at, uh, historical city. This is, uh, uh, this is um, photographs of, uh, of a Roman city of Pompeii, um, where we uh, started to study a little bit you know, how, the, how the system of street is done, how the forum is created as, the, as a central, um, as, a, as the, the heart uh, of the city, uh, where you have the crossing of the main streets, but this main streets do not enter really the forum, but they, they are tangential uh, to it. So these kind of things were really interested, uh, interesting for us, uh, including, of, co of course, the measures, the proportions, the dimensions uh, of, uh, um, of all this. Um, but of course, um, to find places where people come together, you need not uh, go back to antiquity. Uh, um, our cities are full of incredible spaces that have been really invented uh, for as gathering places for people. So it's the Plaza Mayor, uh, also the green, the, the big parks uh, of the English uh, uh, cities are of course public spaces or of the American um, cities. And then um, we also looked uh, again with a little presumption uh, to the big the great boulevards like the Rue de Rivoli um, as, uh, as, uh, as streets that are not simply, simply traffic devices, but really places where people come together and, uh, and, uh, uh, and gather. And uh, we put this together, uh, we put this element, or what we thought would be the quintessence of these elements together uh, in a whole plan. Um, I show you a few uh, ideas of the plan. This is a superimposition of the plan. It's an outline to the to the status quo uh, of the buildings. We tried to make a new plan, but not but to to follow a little bit the structure, the old structure of uh, uh, of the plant for. Uh, if you like, nostalgic uh, reasons, uh, reasons of identity, also for very practical reasons. The streets here uh, are all full of infrastructures and of course this machinery must work on 
uh, while uh, uh, during, uh, during construction. So we tried to not to make a plan that would, would be completely, uh, completely new. Um, we were interested in find in giving every single building, these are not blocks uh, like in the city of the, 20, of the 19th century, it's buildings. Uh, the dimensions uh, uh, are, um, sorry I have to give it in meters, uh, are uh, between 50 and 60 meters length and between uh, uh, 18 and 35 meters width. So it's really, it's a rather large, uh, but it's buildings. Um, and we wanted to give to every building at least one frontage towards either an important boulevard, like this one, uh, or an open, or a park, or an open space. And that, that's why we broke up the grid with this uh, arbor long arboretum here and with these uh, uh, squares. Mm. And then we started to define the system of public spaces. We said, okay, this is the entrance uh, from this uh, important street here. We have the main access of Fabrikstraße. At the, there is an end point, which is also a small square. And along this axis, there, are, there will be the main public uh, spaces. So it will be the forum. Uh, in a way echoing the Roman uh, forum. It will be the green, uh, a kind of green uh, place where people can picnic and come together. And here the piazzetta uh, as uh, the counterpart of the green. This is green, as the name says, uh, and this is more, let's say, Italian style, uh, uh, stone paved. Um, and, and as rules for the buildings, um, we established uh, a constant height of 23 meters. I will come back to that in a moment. We established the building lines that have to be respected by every building. Uh, and we established also the main entrance, um, deciding that the main entrances would be on the main streets in yellow, um, so that every building should have really a face, a main face looking, uh, looking uh, where we decided it would look. And of course, uh, around the forum, all buildings would look, for instance, at the square, at the forum. Um, and this is the result uh, of all this. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, um, it's a very simple, when it was published the first time, uh, some people said very boring, uh, some said very strict, so you know, we have different uh, ways of putting it. Um, in any case, it's a very simple um, plan with its main axis, uh, a grid of streets all opening towards, um, towards the Rhine, and this possibility of building uh, uh, here on this, on this plot. What you see in brown, uh, are existing buildings, this is the old headquarters uh, building, and what you see in black are the possibility that we gave to do high rises. We said at in certain points, uh, in certain strategical points, it is possible to go higher than this 23 meters. Um, just a few remarks uh, on the streets. The streets are very narrow. The streets are uh, 10 meters, uh, the, 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 the small streets. The main streets here are 12 meters and Fabrikstraße um, is uh, 20 meters, uh, including uh, the space of, uh, <coughs> of the arcade. We wanted to have very narrow streets. Uh, it's a pedestrian situation. We wanted to have uh, uh, a proportion of the street, of streets that are more narrow than where, where the height of the buildings is, is more than the width of the street, so exactly the contrary of the modernist uh, uh, street. And the 23 meters, and we, we put it in such a way that, uh, that um, traffic can drive through, um, uh, also trucks, because some trucks must enter the, um, the campus, um, and in such a way that um, if the buildings are 23 meters high, natural light still reaches the ground floor, and in such a way that people can work in a good day, in the uh, in daylight without artificial light. So that's, these were the, the, let's say, the variables that we took uh, and by which we decided the, the, the streets that we wanted, as I said, as narrow as possible, also to create the maximum density. This is what we considered the maximum density. Incidentally, um, it was not the legally 
maximum density because uh, uh, from a legal point of view, um, the client could have built up to 40 meters because this is an industrial zone. And uh, we were lucky enough to convince him not to do it. Um, what you also can see is, um, yes, is uh, the big park that we wanted to have at the entrance, the other park towards the Rhine. Um, and uh, uh, what is just sketched here um, is a promenade. A public, this is a private site, um, but we uh, proposed to have a public promenade along the Rhine. Almost in the whole of the city of Basel, not quite, but almost, uh, there is public access to the river and we wanted to keep it. Um, this is the model showing the three dimensions. We were really interested in, 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 in doing this design three-dimensionally from the very start. Um, this is a model made of metal um, because we, ho we hope that if we do the model in metal, um, then you know the plan will be very solid and will not change. Of course, uh, it um, it didn't work uh, like every urban plan. It changed uh, a lot because of the needs of the company. So, for instance, the buildings that you can see here, rather slim and elegant, became you know fatter and fatter. Um, but uh, well, still, uh, still in a, in a, in, a, in a way that um, <clears throat> that this. Uh, fine network of street that we were really interested in uh, is, uh, is still, um, is still um, kept. Um, a look at the situation as, uh, as, um, as the whole thing looks like now. And the idea of the plan uh, was that no building should be destroyed in order to realize the plan. So, um, the idea was to have a, a long-term, general, strict plan um, and that every building that would become obsolete would be torn down and then rebuilt following the plan. But the rest would stay. So you can see uh, here, it's quite a, it's still quite, it, looks, it still looks quite messy, um, but it is not so messy um, because you can, if you look better, you can see here that the main street uh, is already in place. This is the entrance pavilion. The entrance has been completely changed. Originally it was from here, from the side. Uh, and you can see also the forum. Um, this is the existing, um, the existing uh, old traditional uh, historical uh, administration um, <coughs> building. And you can see this fabulous uh, situation towards the Rhine. What you see here is a harbor. Um, uh, a harbor that uh, we thought would not make sense uh, in this place uh, in, uh, in the city. And in fact, uh, through negotiations with the city, uh, we were able to uh, put the harbor away. It will go here where there is already a harbor. So this can really become, uh, in a few years time, uh, part of, uh, um, of the park. Um, as I said, the public space were, was really our, our main concern. Um, so just to show you a little bit, this is, this is how the streets uh, looked like and partially still look like in the beginning. So it's a very industrial site, uh, not very pleasant to walk. And especially um, uh, this machinery is uh, here in the back. Let me see if I can, I lost my button. Uh, no, I found it again. This machinery uh, in a way closed the streets towards the Rhine, which is exactly what we would like to, 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 open, uh, to open up. And, uh, and uh, this shows the first transformation. It's just one of the small streets that we've, uh, we've done. You can see they are paved decently. Uh, there are trees uh, put up. These are the new buildings. I will come to them uh, in a minute. But uh, they become spaces where people uh, drive their bicycle, walk, uh, and talk uh, also. Um, when I say we, um, it is not a pluralis majestatis, um, but it's a, it's a correct uh, grammatic, gr grammar form, um, because such a plan uh, or such an endeavor cannot be made, uh, made uh, alone. And, um, and uh, what we managed to put, put up was uh, the so-called workshops or group of people um, starting from our plan and then 
enriching it with a lot of ideas and competences and, uh, and, uh, and knowledge. Here we are at work, as you can see, uh, very pleasant. Um, and, uh, um, and I will just show you um, a few results of this uh, uh, transdisciplinary work. So we had, of course, a landscape uh, architect. It was Peter Walker uh, who did the landscaping of, uh, of, um, of the streets. Um, we had another landscape architect, Günther Vogt, who did uh, the main park uh, at the entrance. Uh, this is how it looks uh, now. And we had an art uh, consultant, it was Harald Seemann, um, who helped us to place art. This is uh, obviously Richard Serra, uh, a work that he did especially for, for this site. He helped us, first of all, selecting the, 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 the right art, but especially to put the art not somewhere, but where it really would, would fit the plan. So this is, in a way, the point de vue, the ending point of the main axis of the Fabrikstraße, and it works very nicely. And we, we were able to work with, with Sarah. He came to the site, um, we showed him the plan, and he decided this is the place where I want to put the sculpture, and we were lucky because it was a very good place. Um, we also had a graphic designer, Alan Fletcher, uh, who, who helped us with all all the ideas of creating an identity. Uh, one of the problems of these new developments is that they are new, so that they are, you know, they don't have the depth of history. And, uh, and we felt that putting more and more ideas into, into uh, it would make it simply richer and make it easier for the people to identify. So this is a study by Alan um, of the so-called Wonder Wall. Um, Alan had this incredible gift uh, of turning problems around. We had the problem of creating a fence. Um, uh, and he said, OK, you need a fence, but a fence should not be something that keeps you out, but should be something that somehow invites you to look into. And, uh, uh, and so he inv invented this wonder wall with this, uh, uh, with this phantasmagory of, uh, of, uh, uh, of strange uh, figures. We also had. Uh, a general master plan for the lightning. We wanted to have the lighting coordinated all over, all over the campus. This is just an example of the road. And uh, we kept, in a, in, a, in a way that is almost uh, obsessive, I admit, um, we kept control of all the public spaces. I must say that the main, the, one, one of, the, of the presumptions of the plan uh, was to say, we do a very strict plan, very simple, very monotonous, if you like, um, and the variety that we all like in our cities is done not artificially, but uh, by, by inviting different architects to the buildings, the single buildings. So to have a real diversity of ideas, cultures, uh, obviously nationalities, and, um, and so on. But I must say I was quite scared uh, at the same time of uh, the exuberance, let's say, of the colleagues, and we will come to that uh, in a minute. So, so we, we designed really all the public spaces, uh, and we wanted the public spaces to be absolutely uh, homogeneous, absolutely the same, all the same. So the side, this is a drawing of the sidewalk. Uh, the sidewalk would be in gray granite. Uh, the streets would be also granite, but uh, almost uh, white. And it would all be the, uh, the same. And this obsession went, um, uh, ah, mm, uh, the streets, um, the streets of the plants were called, you know, A, B, C, and uh, one, two, three. Um, they got names, real names, uh, of people that helped uh, the advancement of life sciences, like Asclepius, for instance, um, and we put them, uh, we put them in the sidewalk um, because it's a pedestrian zone. That's the way. That's the way you look when you uh, when you have to step step up. And also, of course, because we didn't know how the buildings would become and how we could, you know, fix any any sign to the buildings. And in fact, we were right, as you will see. Um, and it went so far. Uh, our obsession for the unity of public spaces uh, that we even um, even designed, uh, you know, the places where you throw uh, the paper away. Um, this is just the status of um, the situation. I mentioned the different architects that uh, were invited. They were invited in the first step by competitions, by small competitions. Um, in the second step, by the client uh, himself, who sometimes listened to my good advice, sometimes not. Um, 
And uh, anyway, this is uh, uh, the situation. You can see in white are the new uh, the new buildings um, or the buildings that are that are uh, up. Uh, you can see how they, uh, you know, they are just like insertions uh, um, in into a quite disorderly uh, situation, a disorderly situation that will remain for a long time. Um, I don't mind, I must say. Um, but some of the spaces are created, so the Forum is there, Fabrikstraße is almost there, uh, the green uh, is, uh, is here. So the plan takes shape without being forced into, um, into shape. I show you very quickly uh, uh, some of, uh, of uh, the architectures. This is, uh, of course, the parking garage. It's done by a very young architect, Marco Serra. I show it because it's the entree of the whole, uh, um, of the whole um, situation. As I said, it's a pedestrian zone, so you have to leave your car um, in, one, in either a parking lot in the north or this parking garage uh, in the south, um, and then you enter by foot or by... Uh, bicycle. Um, this is the entrance pavilion by Marco Serra uh, II. Uh, this is the first building to be built uh, by Dina and Dina. Uh, this is the second by Sejima. It's, uh, it's what you see, it's a mix by, it's basically two functions. It's either uh, office building or uh, lab uh, building for, uh, for research. This is Peter Merkley. Um, this is our idea of the of the forum that is not quite uh, was not quite uh, realized. This is Taniguchi uh, research uh, building. Um, this is our building um, that I show you a little bit uh, more in detail. Well, first of all, because it's our building and uh, we are quite proud of it. Um, but also because for us it's a kind of prototypical building uh, for the master plan. And I'm very interested in in understanding urban design as something that goes into architecture, that, that considers, that does not define architecture, but really considers it and gives it certain rules. So you see, our building um, has a certain materiality. Uh, it's, uh, it's a stone building with large um, windows. Um, it, uh, it shows the arcade. I forgot to tell, um, along Fabrikstraße, the only real uh, architectural feature that we, we, we defined was to have asymmetrically, like in the Rue de Rivoli, uh, a continuous arcade along Fabrikstraße for one very special reason. Um, under, underneath these buildings, um, or in the ground floors of these buildings, are all social amenities uh, necessary for a campus of uh, now it's uh, 7,000 people, it will be 10,000 when it's finished, so it's quite a community. Um, so you need restaurants, cafes, uh, fitness center, shops, and, um, and so on. And they are all underneath the arcade. And the idea is to have uh, Fabrikstraße, this main axis, as the place where people would, will move back and forth, and uh, so also a meeting place and a place where, where, where people uh, walk. Um, so. Um, so this is our prototype. Um, mm, for every building, we were able to do a mock-up in scale one-to-one. -one. Um, it looks like an incredible luxury. It is an incredible luxury, I tell you. Um, but, uh, but it's not an invention. In the late 19th century, um, it was quite common that for important buildings, a mock-up uh, in scale one-to-one -one was, um, was done. Maybe the most famous is uh, the mock-up of uh, Otto Wagner's uh, um, <coughs> museum in Vienna which eventually did not, uh, did not work out. Um, so the mock-up uh, is used both to explain the client what we want, but also for us to, to make experiments. You can see here we have used uh, the same material, it's all marble, um, but, uh, but we have used it in different ways. So here it's polished, here it's just cut, uh, it's bush hammered, um, to, to, to really make experiments for ourselves. And, uh, and to understand ourselves, uh, how we really want to have um, <coughs> to have the the, <coughs> the building. Um, <coughs> this is a view of uh, of uh, the arcade as it eventually comes out. Uh, this is the plan, uh, just to show you. Uh, basically, it's again, it's really prototypical. So um, every building on Fabrikstraße has 
a main entrance with a lobby leading to the office space um, and another entrance leading to a public amenities uh, amenity. In this case, it's a rather long restaurant uh, with a bar um, that we have uh, here. And while the building is uh, and the restaurant, let's say, does not belong to the building. It belongs to the campus. So it's open for everybody on, on, uh, uh, on campus. Um, this is a view of, uh, of, um, of the lobby. It looks larger than it is in uh, reality. Um, and these are the workspaces that we interpret that are, it's all open space. Um, and uh, we interpret a little bit as, again, as a city, as, uh, as a place where people we have streets where people can move around, look at other people, and uh, and uh, understand immediately who's there and who's not uh, who's not there. In order to to link the five floors together, the five floors of the building, we've done a big stair, uh, again, kind of big street, internal street uh, of the building um, that looks like this. It's absolutely open to both sides so that you have complete visibility of the whole building beside the fact that it creates a kind of section to the building so that you are immediately oriented uh, in the building um, in the building itself and while the building outside is quite cold uh, made of white stone uh, the inside is quite warm so it's a lot of wood and and uh, and, uh, and fabric these are the workspaces these are the informal spaces where people can gather and, uh, and uh, have more informal, uh, uh, informal chats. These are the meeting rooms, of course, in the corner. Um, and on top, uh, we have a roof garden that, again, is not simply a place uh, where you have flowers, but is an open space environment uh, where people can work in the, when, uh, when the weather is, um, is, uh, is fair. Um, and this is a view of the restaurant, very long, in a way, again, creating a kind of section through the building. This is the bar, and, um, and this uh, is a place where people, um, <coughs> where people eat. Um, this is a view of, uh, uh, of our building in the context of, uh, um, of the street. Um, you can see, you can uh, have a, an idea that uh, uh, basically we are the, the only one who really did an arcade. Um, since we, dis we defined that it, an arcade should be built, every colleague tried to find a trick to avoid uh, the arcade, so have, to have a cantilever, to have slabs, to have whatever, but not uh, a real arcade. But that's part probably of the training of the architects. Uh, this is the building, uh, our neighbor by Rafael Moneo, well known in the school. Uh, this is uh, a lab building by Krishanitz. This is a project by David Chipperfield. We're going along, quick, very quickly along um, Fabrikstraße, and this is the ending point uh, of Fabrikstraße, um, <coughs> a building by, a lab building by Tadao uh, Ando. Um, imagine who this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, Frank Gehry just in front uh, of us and, and opening towards the green, this open space that I mentioned uh, before. This is Fuimikomaki, which is a little bit off uh, Fabrikstraße. Um, and, uh, uh, <coughs> and this is uh, Eduardo Soto Mura uh, in front and in the back, uh, Alvaro Siza, two lab buildings towards. Uh, towards um, the Rhine. I'm showing you all these buildings, uh, again, very, very quickly, um, in a way to show you also a dilemma uh, or, or an open question. Uh, the open question is, will all this become a piece of a city? Or, or, I mean, is this becoming a piece of a city? Or is it becoming a collection of architectures? And in a way, we are back to good and bad manners uh, in architecture and to the chaos image that I showed you um, uh, before. And it's a big question of, uh, you know, how much, how much conventions do we still have in architecture so that people, architects, buildings can be different and still speak a common language? Uh, and where is the point where variety becomes disruption um, and, uh, and buildings do not talk to, um, to each other um, anymore? I think we are just, you know, in the balancing between disruption and, uh, uh, and coherence. Uh, 
Personally, I'm confident, I'm always uh, quite optimistic, uh, I'm confident that the fact that this public space is all the same, that all the streets are the same, uh, and that the plan is so boring, um, so strict, um, will, will manage to keep the whole thing together and it will not be uh, an open air museum. But it's, I mean, we will see. It's, it's an open, for me, it's an open question. Um, to show you very briefly, uh, and to finish also, Yes, to finish. Um, this is uh, um, a sketch, a first sketch of the promenade along the Rhine, done by a landscape uh, architect for the public administration. Uh, of course, it will be public. Um, this is uh, these are first ideas of uh, what could happen at the point where uh, the big bridge arrives. This is a campus, just as the volumes, um, and there would be a possibility of. Uh, creating interesting synergies, not so much architectural, also architectural synergy, but uh, especially functional synergy by putting uh, institutes from the University of Basel, uh, ex the same institutes that do exactly the same research as a firm uh, nearby so that there is an interchange. Uh, um, and, um, and last but not least, it shouldn't be forgotten that we are not, that this is not a city. Uh, even if we took the model of the city, we took the metaphor of the city, it's a workspace. Uh, it's a big workspace. In fact, we were, at the beginning, we were asked to do very large buildings. Uh, we, we chopped them down to, to fairly small buildings because we think they're much more efficient and, and because we think that the movement of people uh, uh, works, um, works uh, better. Um, and of course, we were trying to create an environment that is not Jacques Tati's uh, um, environment of playtime where, I don't know if you've seen the film, where people work in these cubicles and uh, nobody, and he's looking for somebody um, and, um, and he never find him, finds him because people move around but don't see each other, um, and so uh, so he gets desperately uh, lost. Um, and um, and in order to find this this way of create of uh, of a new workspace, we even did a pilot um, on the campus just by refurbishing one floor. It was really an experiment. Refurbishing one floor. It was done by Seville Peach, a British. Uh, architects specialize in this kind of, of, uh, of uh, working environment. And this is the plan that she did, which become, became, in a way, the master plan of the working uh, environments, uh, looking like this, so very open, very transparent, very, very, very urban, if you like. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, the nicest thing is, uh, or at least for me, was to see that after a certain time, um, the campus really started to work as this machine, uh, you know, attracting people, making them move, making them stay in line for uh, for an ice cream like this. This is Fabrikstraße, um, and uh, uh, and also offering them. Uh, uh, this is a view of the forum, offering them a workspace that was uh, not uh, somehow not uh, not foreseen, um, but uh, in. Uh, in the sunny days, even in Switzerland there are some sunny days, um, in the sunny days uh, people would sit outside on the forum uh, um, just chatting and relaxing, but also working. Um, and, uh, and I think that this is not simply an enlargement of the workspace uh, that is very positive and, uh, and attractive, but uh, for me it shows that uh, the model of the city really still works uh, in uh, um, as uh, as a, a machinery for uh, communication um, and also that urban design still has the power, the capability of uh, creating a certain order in what uh, uh, Ms. van der Rohe called the desperate disorder of our time. Thank you very much. Before people leave, uh, uh, Victoria would be happy, please, to answer some questions about either this project or uh, other aspects of your of urban design. <laughs> yes, please. It takes an extraordinary client to uh, understand the vision, support it, finance it, and stick with it over a long period of time. Can you say a little bit about how you work in that relationship? Because it takes a lot of commitment to, to make that stick. With, with the company? 
Mm. It does, and of course we were lucky. I mean, the first thing was uh, uh, that we were lucky. Um, we managed also to be convincing. Um, and uh, uh, I'll just give you one example, because, uh, uh, because it's, it's, it's a very tricky question. I mean, it's a very good and uh, difficult question. How do you present a thing that you don't know how it will look like? No. Uh, so the renderings don't really work and, uh, and sketches don't really work and drawings are not understood by the client. Um, so, uh, so just to give you one example, what we did um, was uh, we did a film. We, did, uh, we took our plan, made a 3D uh, out of it and uh, put people into that in a, in a film. Um, and, uh, and by this film we showed um, a little bit or we gave a first imagine image of the life that could take place uh, uh, on campus, of how people would move along Fabrikstraße, um, uh, how they would use these social amenities that were not centralized anymore as they used to be in the beginning, uh, but, uh, but open up. So that was one, uh, one instrument. The second one was pilots. That was absolutely uh, necessary. Um, so before starting doing, you know, open space uh, offices, because people said, no way, we don't, we will not go into open spaces. We'll, they hate them. Um, we did a pilot, uh, and uh, so and they enjoyed it. And other people came and said, ah, oh, it's not so bad after all. And they were really able to try it. Or the cafes, we wanted to to break up the central cafeteria and have different restaurants and, uh, and cafes. And, uh, and they said, typical Italian idea, uh, Italians drink coffee all the time, and especially they don't work. Um, and our people, they said, must work, so they don't have time to, take, uh, to, to drink uh, coffee, and if they have, the bosses will never allow it. Um, so we did a pilot, uh, we did just uh, uh, this was called, uh, ironically, the Italian coffee bar um, that was put in a very bad place in an, an existing building, but for very little money. Um, of course, it worked very nicely. And at that point, things were, we were able, first of all, to, to, to do things and also to, con to con by convincing uh, the client that it would work. The client and associates, because that, that was also a crucial point. My, my question is about how, do, how, because this this place is a campus and it's not open to the city, right? Right. So at the moment, because, uh, well, that, that's the question. If if it will become part of the city, I think like one of the main, well, or the the main thing would be to really be part of the city for the whole for the whole public. So how how do you intend it to become part of the city if it's somehow closed? <laughs> That's, a, that's also a very good question. Um, <clears throat> very simply, um, I can answer very simply. Uh, of course, I don't, I'm just the architect, so I don't have the power to decide will it be open or not be open. Um, what we can do are two things. We can, uh, well, one thing actually, uh, is to create all, all premises um, so that it can become a part of the city, meaning uh, linking it uh, to the existing street grid, which we have done, even if, it's, uh, if it has a kind of own physiognomy because the scale is different, um, and um, connecting, uh, there is a problem, now there is a problem with production because production is still going on and it's a very dangerous uh, uh, production. Production eventually will go away, there will still be a problem between, between some of the research buildings and those we have connected with, uh, with underground tunnels. And then all buildings are secured from the, what do you call it, the second floor on. So the ground floor, the first floor is, uh, is open um, and after that uh, it's, uh, it's secure and you enter only with a badge. So theoretically, uh, once the production is gone um, and once we have connected all, well, not all, 
the, 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 the problematic buildings with underground tunnels, um, then it's possible without danger for the people uh, coming in to open, mm -hmm. to open the, uh, up the, um, let's say the, the, the ground floor. If it will happen, frankly, I don't know. Um, I'm quite convinced that it will happen because it's in the interest of, of the company. Uh, of course, the restaurants are much more fun if there is a mixture of uh, people and uh, they are very inter interested in attracting students into, into the campus. And of course, they can attract students into the campus only if they open it up. When the factory was built, there was a very different attitude towards the river. I think uh, in those times, the river was seen as a trash dump. Now we have a different uh, attitude towards waterfronts. You kept the orientation of the original factory and you added a promenade. How have you, uh, what more have you done uh, aside from the promenade to create a new relationship with the river? Um. Basically, not um, not much, um, because we we wanted to keep the geometry. We were interested in keeping the geometry, even if it's, the geometry is not oriented towards the river. But the streets open up to the, to, to the river. The river is quite low down. It's um, um, it's about uh, 12 meters underneath uh, the campus, so you can't really reach it easily. Um, but you you look at it. You look at the, you don't see the water, but you you know it's like. A little bit like in New York, uh, you don't see the water, but you see this open space uh, which has a fascination, and that we wanted to have. So, what to answer your question? What we have really done? Well, first of all, we've uh, uh, we're getting rid of all the trash that, in fact, they have dumped into the river, and it's highly poisonous. That's the first step. Um, and the second, the second one is to open the streets to get rid of all this uh, these machines and pipes and so on, and to have just um, to, 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 to open, visually, to open the streets through the park to, uh, towards the river. Hi. Um, to what extent was there an acceptance or a conscious acceptance of a changing managerial model? It seems like this is a very residential feel, a very a feel where there is a very sort of flat recognition of your management structure. Um, to what extent does the physical a response to that consciously reflect a changing management structure? Um, in a way, it's the other way around almost. Um, um, the top management of the firm wanted to change the way the management w worked. And, uh, and in a way, we were asked to create the spaces and the structures that would almost force them to 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 do this change, so you know the the bosses, for instance, they have no 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 own offices anymore. They have a desk like everybody else, and this this is a is is, is a major uh, change and also a painful change for some people. How much resistance was there? A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot in the beginning. I must say, um, we also. Um, we also had surveys uh, on how people responded. So the first, uh, um, when the first buildings were made, um, more than half of the people were against the change. I thought it would, would be for worse. Then after a year of experience of the building, um, the acceptance was about uh, <clears throat> between 70 and 80 percent. And there will be always be a rest of people that are not happy with the uh, with the open space, but that's that's normal. I think there, there was a question up there, sir. Okay. 